so much happens. You know, there are different types of worship. But when we begin to worship God spontaneously, in Hebrew it's called Tahila. Tahila, which means to use your lips, instruments, mouth, to, to sing out louder. To Tahila, it means to worship God, to praise Him out loud. It is what normally in the Bible when they used Tahila, they would have victories. In 2 Chronicles 20, from verse 21, going down, the Bible talks about how they praised God as the first their enemy. They were not worshiping God because there was an enemy ahead. But they began to sing out loud and praise God. And they were singing. That his mercy endures forever. And they were marching towards the enemy. At that point, they were no longer seeing how great the enemy was. They were singing how great the Lord is. This is a level of Tahila. When you get into a level where you actually stop seeing the enemy's force. You stop seeing what you're facing. You begin to see how great God is. And it's this moment that God comes down and really shows you how great he is. So when we Tahila, when we worship God, when we praise him out loud from the depths of our hearts, with our lips and songs of praise and psalms and hymns, and give him the glory and the praise. The Hebrew word there is to Tahila. It, it, it is what makes a person forget what they are facing? It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the fire was burning, they were inside praising God. When Paul and Silas were in jail and chained in prison, the Bible said they began to worship, to praise, to Tahila. As they were praising, this was beyond the prison cells. They had a report they were being killed the following morning. The men to kill them were already located by the supreme leadership of Israel. For there was a ruling that they must be killed. So they had a death sentence. It was beyond being in the prison cells. And the Bible says the king did this because he saw people were happy. And he did it to please the people. But they forgot the men they arrested knew how to Tahila. Amidst the death sentence, the men began to worship God. They were not doing it in secret. It was what was coming out of their lips. The prison cells were shocked. They began to experience a melody from the mouth of the death sentenced victim who is about to be killed. The man began to worship God. How great is your name? How powerful is your name? Lord, I lift your name on high. There is nothing greater than you, nothing bigger than you. As he and Cyrus began to worship, the prison cells began to shake. And the Bible says that even the doors of the prison cells began to quake. And suddenly, doors began to open on their own. Because there was an influence of a Tahila, a worship that supersedes what you're passing through. It is a worship that goes beyond your situation. You no longer see what you're facing. And as they began to worship, as they began to Tahila, as they began to sing, to praise God spontaneously, it's not like you, you have a plan, like how are you going to worship it? It just happens spontaneously. Things just begin to come out of you. As they were doing it, heaven 
decided to come and join them. Now there are no bonds with heavens. There are no boundaries in heaven. There are no chains. As heaven came to join them in worship, doors had to open. Foundations had to quake because the king was coming. Angels were coming to join them as they were worshiping. And what happened? The, pre, the, 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 the prison uh, 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 foundations, as they were shaking, the Bible said, and the guards who were guarding the prisons, as they were holding their spears, began to tremble. And they went on their knees and they said, Paul, they said, Sars, they used the word Sars. From hey, Paul to Sars. There were two, so you could go say Sars. Say Sars. Please. Don't kill us. <laughs> you see that? And brought them out and they said, Sars. What must I do to be saved? There was no preaching, sir. There was no teaching. These men knew nothing about Jesus. But when they were hearing the worship, they thought it was a nonsense. When they were hearing, we worship you, they thought it was nonsense. Until that worship began to shake the foundations. And the men said, no, 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 we need your Jesus. And the Bible says, at that very night, they said, please, the guards, people are sleeping. Can you go to our houses from guarding them to cooking for them? And they ate dinner in the houses. In the morning, the king heard what had happened in the prisons. That there were men who were worshipping. As they were worshipping, the prison began to shake. And the doors opened and some other prisoners have fled. But these men, after what they did, they came back in the prison. And they are refusing to leave. They are saying that the one who put them in that prison should be the one himself who must come and take them out. The king said, no. Tell them I don't want to see them. Tell them to leave. They are released. You see what happened? They said they were worshipping. As they were worshipping, prison cells and the doors and the foundations began to shake and all the doors opened. The king said, hey, tell them I love them. Tell them to go, they are free. The Bible says, Paul said, you arrested us in public. Come and release us in public. Oh yes. Don't joke with worship and praise. I'm telling you, there are some doors and cells that break their foundations in your family. There are some foundations in your background. There are some demonic foundations and cases that begin to quake and shake. There are some doors which we are closed. As you watch it, they begin to open. Somebody said, Tahila. As they were worshiping. Hmm. And that second Chronicles 20, I told you from verse 21 going down the Bible said, and they were worshiping, facing the enemy. They were not seeing the enemy anymore. There were three nations that had come together to invade Israel. I'm not talking about one. The Bible says the number of soldiers could not be counted. And when they heard, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed the singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. In verse 22. Then the Bible says, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Three countries. These men didn't face them with weapons. They faced them with the praise and worship. Can you imagine the bank just wrote you something that is disturbing you, and you just take that document and put it on your table and begin to praise God? And begin to worship God. Say, God, I see how great you are. 
What makes one to even have the saliva become sour because of stress? Now what I'm going to do here, even souls immediately appearing in your mouth because of what the doctor say or because of what you heard about yourself or what they're saying they're going to do to you. Because of stress, headaches. It's because you don't know how great God is. You don't know how great God is. You just don't know how great God is. So when we come and begin to worship God, we are trying to, to, to release what we know about Him. The whole reason we pray is because we know who He is. So when we begin to worship, we are just simply talking how great He is. Give me that song. How great is our God. 